in uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, a little north of town there on uh, what we call the Mac McFatton Road. It's on the uh, Arkansas River. And that's where I was born there in 1932. And, and there we uh, we all attended what we call a one room room uh, classroom there, where we had what the six what first grade through the I thought it was eighth grade I believe it was, and had one teacher. And you and being in the first grade, you'd be listening to everything happening right over up at all the classes. So you came out a pretty pretty educated little fellow, you know, after <laughs> eight years there. Then from there, we, I was called the, uh, I was up in the Warren area. My great-great-grandfather who donated that church, uh, where the church was located, to that uh, to the community. His name was uh, George Warren. And uh, then from there, we moved down to the city of Pine Bluff. And there, I, I attended first grade through the sixth grade, of what we, then was called Merrill High School. Then I moved out west in the, in the same little town in Pine Bluff. And, in the Watson Chapel School District, I attend what we call the uh, the uh, Jefferson County Training School. When I first got there, it was you go up to the eighth grade. Then they kept adding the grade when I got there, so I stayed to the twelfth grade. And at the end of that, uh, they call it the Coburn High School, and uh, that's why I finished high school and went to uh, UAPB at that time. We called Uni University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. That hit us hard, and uh, here you are. I was, in, I was in high school at that time. Then when I came here, we, uh, you're talking to the, some of the older engineers that we, we could have done something like that earlier, but we didn't. I don't know why. But anyway, we, then we, when we caught fire and started moving, then we, I think we went ahead of them, much ahead of them. A good mathematics department, and you had some physics in the chemistry area, but I went into mathematics, and uh, I got my B.S. Uh, Bachelor of Science degree there. After I finished there, the next year I taught high school mathematics, uh, mathematics uh, in the high school area in uh, West Memphis, Arkansas. That's going right across the river from uh, Mississippi River from uh, Memphis area. I stayed there one year, then I was ha hired back at the high school that I finished from. Then I stayed there for about five years, and then uh, National, uh, National Science Foundation, and it's amazing that the high school at that time was paying small amount, and when I got the grant, I about tripled my salary for the year I was that wicked at the next 63. They said, hey, you got this a year study at the University of Arkansas to work on your master's degree. Then uh, I, they gave me, uh, we moved my, my family up there. We stayed up in Fayetteville for a year and, and enjoyed it, you know, and the increase in salary, like I told you before, was tremendous, you know. So I went up to the University of Arkansas and worked on uh, mathematics and uh, what we call applied mathematics. Then uh, while I was there, NASA came through recruiting. And uh, you, you probably run into Charles Smoot. Smoot was up there, and I'd never met him before, and he was recruiting, and he was telling about the, uh, he had Marshall Space Flight Center, and Von Braun was the uh, center director. And of course, we heard about Von Braun, but uh, not Marshall Space Flight Center at that time. And, and uh, I asked Smoot, I said, what is it like down in Alabama? Now, we heard about your governor and all those people, you know, and he said, well, He's, you know, he was from Birmingham. He said, well, you in, this is going to be in Huntsville, and about 100 miles north of Birmingham. It's a little bit different. I said, well, how much different, you know? <laughs> See, when Smooch came in, he told me about the, the work they had here and all of that kind of thing. Then I went back and told my wife, I said, you want to go to Alabama? I said, no, at that time, you know, we had, they had a governor here. She said, no, I don't want to go to Alabama. I said, well, that's what I got offered to go down to uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and she said, you sure you want to go? <laughs> I said, let's give it a try. So I came over, we came over, uh, they gave me a trip over here to visit and look around, look for housing or whatever, and I did that. And uh, it was a little bit different than what we thought it was here in North Alabama, at what we had, had framed in our mind what it was going to be like, you know. Then uh, I convinced her that we should go and then 
we came over in uh, June of 64. In your mind at the time, at, you, uh, you knew about the Jim Crow, you knew about the whole state of Alabama, which we thought, you know. But it's totally uh, different when we got here to the northern part of Alabama. You know, I'm not saying that it was all peaches and cream, but it was totally different what we had framed in our minds, uh, in our mind about here in, uh, in Huntsville. At that time, we had about 700 science and engineers with the support contractors, and that uh, Hauserman was our director, and I came to work for the division chief of Brooks Moore. You've probably heard of Brooks Moore. He was the first non-German to head that up. So he became, later on, became lab director. And Hauserman was he, he's a very quiet guy, but he's all science. He's all headed for the mission. It was enjoyable to work with him. Very quiet, though. Few words. Okay. At that time, we uh, had the control system for the uh, S-4B, and we were working the control system, and I was uh, assigned to a, uh, at that time, we, the uh, organization was the uh, law, was the unit section, then branch. Then from branch, it went to the division. And I was in a unit at that time, and uh, my unit chief, was Herman Height. We called him HQ, H H H Q. That was his initials, you know. We were working with the control system, and uh, we would we were doing the uh, working with the hardware of it, test it in our what we call our lab downstairs area, and to see that it would work. And then we went through a tremendous amount of testing on it before you would say, "Hey, this thing is ready to fly." At that time, we were using the IBM computers. And the auditor, that was, had those bigger vacuum tubes and everything. It had one room with that little computer. It's amazing when you look at that then and look at what we got now when you get put out this thing and you, you, with what you got in your pocket would do just as much as what we could do with that whole room area, keeping it air conditioned and keeping it up going. And that was what we had. And it was, it was amazing. But step by step, everything began to move. And uh, we was able to do uh, put that together, and they put, able to fly that that particular crow system on the S4B stage. It was uh, good work. We enjoyed it. We worked long hours, you know. But that's the way the whole uh, division was was dedicated to that type of operation. Then then I got into the uh, navigation system for the what we call the uh, lunar rowing vehicle, and that was enjoyable because it had taken you from S4B into that, and that was exciting. And I, uh, I think I got a NASA accommodation medal, and I got a Snoopy on that because the, uh, on the S4B unit, uh, we, we flew, uh, what, three, three flights on that, and one of them was the, uh, uh, the very first one. We had, had, had the, uh, uh, lunar rover vehicle on that uh, launch, and uh, the astronaut would take it and then you, you go out and locate different locations we had mapped out before they got there, you know, and then look at this and this and this. And at the end, we told uh, Scott, I think Scott was the, was the lead guy on that, said, when you finish up, just go out as fast as you can and let's see some rooster tail, what they look like, so we get some uh, information on that. And he did that, and that was exciting. It was. When they came back, we flew down to uh, JSC, Johnson Space Center down there, and we would interview those guys and, to get some feedback real time of uh, what the system worked, what it did, what it didn't do, what the shortcoming, so we could take that and then increase uh, for the next time. We flew three of those things down there. We built a model would we, as close as we could a 3D type model, and we could pinpoint the, the we call it traverses. Those are the the paths you would take traverses, and we would locate different uh, landmarks that we could, we could uh, to get those coordinates on those where they can set those in and they could do navigation. And, and, and doing that, you know, you would run into some problems. So in the real time, now we had to support those people in real time over the comp lab over here. We call it. And we was, had a direct line up to, uh, to the uh, 
to the Houston guy who was there who we talked to, and he would talk relate to the astronaut. On the, we was given the points and all and all those things, and it's amazing how that it works. But we did a lot of ground testing though, a lot of it. If you didn't, you, you wouldn't make it. Matter of fact, we went to took the a uh, vehicle out. It wasn't the one the LRV, but a, uh, a six wheel vehicle out to uh, to Arizona, a little above north of uh, Flagstaff. And ran up in that uh, those that, that cinder. It was pretty. It wasn't like on the surface, but it was give you a little bit closer of that. And we had, and you had slipperage. You know, you you drive your car, you will get slipperage, but you don't see realize where how much it is until you started using that as part of your system to keep you accurate. And it was amazing that you get a lot of slippage in your wheels when you spin or whatever that it knock off of your uh, your accuracy. Because one time I think they lost the one of the little. Little fenders on that thing. We all on our team signed that thing on the, and that thing ended up in the museum somewhere. I don't know where it is. Right. Percentage wise, well, we was very, very low. The uh, for in the, in the astronomical laboratory, uh, engineer type. I came in as an aerospace engineer. wasn't too many there. If if more than myself, I don't know. But as time passed by, they began to, the, the problem we had at some of the universities where you had what we call uni, uh, black universities or college, whatever, they didn't, they taught, like I say, you taught math, but you couldn't have, you didn't have the right, your scopes in your, in your lab, so you couldn't hire them in as an engineer, so they had to go somewhere like Georgia Tech somewhere for a couple of years for we could hire those men for NASA, which was surprised that we was uh, to uh, we was in a meeting with Doc at that time. Doctor Lucas was the center director, and uh, we was talking with the, the president of Alabama A and M, and uh, and, I, and I mentioned this to him, and Doc was surprised. Thought, he thought we could hire them out, at, but you couldn't. The system didn't. They weren't engineers, so they was a uh, what mathematician. You brought them in a different. That's a different set of pay scales too, you know. Uh, look, I came in as GS7, I elevated GS7 as an aerospace engineer. Then, then you bring them in, and after they work and they get for me with the job and whatever, then things went to move, went to move gradually. I guess you could push a button had it happened from yesterday to today, but he was doing within his means what he could do and within the system that he's working in. Because you start adding you engineers and type, you gotta look at the other state schools and what they're doing in that area. You know. We look at uh, graduate out of Tuskegee. They had a uh, good school down there. And you uh, we had some out of Tennessee State. Well, they were teaching engineer type stuff, you know, and you could hire those people. Because I never went out on a recruiting team, but uh, I don't know how you sold that. Yeah. It, it was a challenge to tell somebody you come to Alabama, you know. First thing you got, when you said a word Alabama, you just scare half of them away, you know. But once you get them here, it's a whole different ball game. It was, uh, it went through a evolution type of thing to me. Because you could see it by living here, you could see that progress. See, uh, when I moved here, we I had uh, three sons, I guess, and the youngest one was a was a, was a one year old baby, or, and we uh, we put him in the uh, college, uh, the Catholic school, St. Joseph Catholic School, and then when they graduated from there, the uh, two of them decided to go to Ed White, and they went from Ed White to Butler, you know, and one of them went straight from Catholic school at that time when they added that ninth grade. To the high school, he went over there and to Butler and then straight over there. And, and uh, at that time, the system was integrated at that time. Working on the control system for the S4B, working on the navigation system on the LRV, call it the moon beaker, but LRV. Mid 90s, I made the branch chief. They had an opening for the uh, deputy lab director for cell lab, so I applied for that, and I got that. 
So I worked that for maybe a year or so. Then Jim Mack, who was the SE uh, director at the time, said, uh, Astro, I need a deputy over there. So I came over as a deputy to Joe Randall for Astro Laboratory, and that's the laboratory that I started in. Then Joe retired in mid-90s, I guess. Then I applied and got the director of the Astro Laboratory. That's my beginning and the ending, you know. So uh, that, was, that, was, that was a great feeling there. Looking back, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Uh, I remember some of the people that was my boss when I got here ended up working in my lab when I left. That's amazing, isn't it? In Alabama, something to be blessed by.